from the Lake House. Uh, if you haven't tuned in yet, I am Ari Kaplan, head of evangelism. And I am Pearl. And I'm sure y'all know us by now, so I'm not going to introduce myself. <laughs> and, and we've had a, an incredible day. Thank you all for tuning in, however long you've been in. It started out with us early in the morning before the open and general session. And then we've been here interviewing incredible guests from all uh, walks of the community. Um, so Pearl, ha ha we've also been having like 30 minutes, 60 minute breaks. Have you done anything interesting? Unfortunately, no, but I know that once I'm done here, I'm gonna take a well and need a nap. <laughs> but it's been such a great and fun day. I've had such an amazing time meeting all the amazing guests and I'm just looking forward to an awesome week. So what are yeah. you? Yeah, well, well, first of all, it was really cool to get behind the scenes, uh, you know, seeing the, the speaker room before the general session, everyone would be walking up, that was cool. And then we went around, we're in the exhibit hall, you could probably see some of the buzz behind us. Um, had one of the segments from the uh, industry lounge over there, but then also started doing some B-rolls and interviewing some of our uh, great partners on how that thing's going. Also wanted to recognize, we do have people from 157 countries, they had this beautiful sign up uh, listing in all different colors uh, the countries that have been represented. So one of the things we wanted to point out is if you start uh, posting social media and connecting to hashtag live from the lake house, uh, whether you're doing a watch party or uh, wanted to send a comment, some feedback, questions, thoughts, uh, we'd love to have it. Um, but we also had prepared a little video that yes. we wanted to share with you about what it was like this morning. So why look. don't we take it away? And I wanted to introduce our guest, Richard Garris, Product Specialist at Databricks. Say hello. Hi, I'm Richard, I'm Richard Garris. I've been at Databricks for eight years. I've been in the industry in data and AI for, for two decades. So I'm super excited to be here. This is my, uh, I don't have my badge, my 10th summit. We used to do two a year. So over eight years, 10 summits. So I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, a lot has happened. We'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on the change, but why don't we start off, you know, you're involved in a couple key areas uh, across Databricks. Why don't you go through, you know, wh what are you focusing on? What are your priorities? Yeah, so um, it's a super exciting role. So I have a team of uh, product specialists, so our role is to work with our R&D, our, our research development teams to take the new innovations that are coming out of Databricks, which is an innovation factory, and work to put those in the hands of, of everyone here, customers, partners, and you know, try the latest and greatest things from state of the art in terms of both data and AI. So it's been super exciting. I honestly, you stopped me at eight years. I'm sure that things have changed tremendously over the years. And so how has your experience this year at the summit been in consideration to the prior years? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's very, uh, it's been an extremely fun journey. It went from being very, very hacker, very much like, you know, just getting people to come to our meetups and people from Berkeley going out and just trying to evangelize of what uh, open, open source Spark could do at that time. Um, we had our first Spark meetup, so one thing unique about the conference is it, before we actually kick off the conference, everyone in the community, not just conference attendees, can go to the meetup. And we would have a few hundred people that were mostly hardcore developers coming to this event and very, um, you know, we'd have to like do a lot of advertising to get people to come. You know, this year we did a, a big LLM open source event with the whole community. We had over a thousand people in a long line at the Contemporary Jewish Museum uh, two nights ago, you know, come just hear from all of the different technologies coming out. And it's a very, a real treat to see it go from, you know, something very much grassroots and community led to something as, as big as, uh, as the DNI Summit is, is today. That, that's amazing, a thousand people. That, that's probably as big, if not bigger, than some of the earlier uh, Summit or Spark Summit uh, conferences. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole company when I joined was around 55 people. Wow. Um, there are a lot of, uh, some employees, some professors from Berkeley, uh, very, a very research-oriented organization. 
And so, uh, I mean, just, uh, just some of our sessions now are more than 50, 50 people. Um, yeah, the first summits were actually at the Hilton, just, uh, just across from Market Street, and it was just a handful of very developer-oriented conferences where it was just, uh, like, like I said, um, developers were kind of our main audience and practitioners. Uh, I mean, we want to continue it to be that way. One thing we want to avoid at for DNAI Summit is to become um, a trade show with just focusing a lot on like the business side, but also we want to continue to cater toward developers and data scientists, data engineers. Um, our users are really what, what make Databricks what they is today. That's awesome. So I know we had tons of announcements today. Um, what was your favorite? What stuck out to you? So I, I'm, I've been very excited about uh, the potential that we have around uh, large language models. Um, both from what it can mean for developer productivity in terms of Lake House IQ and the ease of use of how you can go from, you know, I have a question about data to actually creating a, a dashboard just like they showed at the demonstration. I'm also super excited about um, uh, the Mosaic ML potential acquisition. Obviously, we wait for that to, to close. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we're really excited about, uh, about that organization, it feels a lot like Databricks was in 2015, 2016. Very similar, you know, amazing team academic researchers, very much same DNA, with the same mission, core mission statement, um, to democratize access to AI for every enterprise. Um, you know, when I first joined Databricks, I was, at, I was previously at Google for, for a number of years, and one of the things that impressed me about, about Databricks compared to Google is Databricks was very interested in democratizing AI for the, the, whole, the whole world. Uh, maybe it came from the Berkeley, the Berkeley roots. And so that was one of the things that really inspired me to join a company that was focused on that mission. Um, Google. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great organization, great company. Things have changed a lot in a decade. Uh, but Google continues to focus a lot on technologies for other Googlers because obviously it is an uh, organization that has a lot of uh, internal knowledge used for a lot of their, their products for consumers. And so I'm very excited about Databricks and what we can provide for the, for the enterprise. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And coming back to like the eight years, one of the things that's close to my heart is machine learning. But eight years ago, uh, very few people were doing it. It was hard mm -hmm. to get cultural adoption at companies. And then maybe two years ago, I've seen like a change where a lot of companies are doing it. And then, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, last November, mm -hmm. you were talking about large language models. Now it seems like every company is at least fascinated, interested, or acting on it. Like, what has it been like to go see from like, resistance or uh, non, non understanding to now everyone wants to get into it. it no, it's, it's actually been a real treat because um, you know, I've been doing data for like 20 years. I only got into AI maybe a decade ago. Uh, so I joined Databricks from a company called Skytree that you know, okay. basically provided machine learning on Hadoop. Um, and it was only really a handful of uh, academic researchers and PhDs that really knew how to use this technology. Um, with the advent of large language models, specifically ChatGPT, the whole world and it can see what it can actually do when applied to real world problems. And so, you know, one of the really exciting things about, you know, my whole career, but especially in my role as product specialist is taking, you know, some of the research and some of the latest state of the art, you know, things that have come out in, in the community and actually applying it in new ways to new customer problems that are, this is really exciting. That's my, that's what my real, real treat is in the, in the role, so. That is really cool. I'm more interested in um, just your experiences. I know, again, you've been part of Databricks for eight years. We've obviously been innovating over every single one of those years, but what has been your um, best experience here at Databricks? So, I, I, you know, people always talk about this from an internal perspective, is the culture. Mm. Um, and so the culture is always a critical part of any organization. Um, and the culture always starts from the top, from the, from the senior leadership. Uh, what, what always impressed me, because I've been, uh, Adidas is my third startup. The first two didn't, didn't really um, obviously work out. Uh, what makes Databricks unique is, uh, in those other two startups, is always um, some out of the healthy tension. Co-founders have a falling out. You know, there's you know, political fights with the board, et cetera. One thing that impressed me about Databricks is you have not just one, but six co-founders, or actually seven, including Arsalan. And you know, all of our co-founders don't always agree. They always have healthy debates and they're always constantly debating. Um, but they all get, to get along, they all get together, they have like founders dinners and so forth. Obviously I'm not in those. But it always impressed me that they can have that tension and also still continue to get along. Mm. Um, any one of them could leave and start their own company and you know, try to go out on their own, but you know, they check the review at the door, they say, hey, you know, you know, I, have, you know, I have expertise in networking, I have expertise in database systems. I have expertise in machine learning, like Matei. 
Um, instead of actually creating my own company and my ego is more important than, you know, than Databricks, you know, they all continue to work together and work together in the company. And that whole mentality kind of bleeds through the whole company so that everyone is kind of focused on the same mission and not about their ego, which is very, very unique, especially in, uh, in Silicon Valley. Great, well we have one minute left. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you know, what, do you, what do you hear from the field in terms of why do, they, why do people love Databricks? So, I mean, what, what always impressed me about Databricks is, that, again, being in the database industry for two decades, is we're solving problems that no other company has actually solved. You know, basically, how can you take large-scale data, apply you know, the latest and greatest machine learning techniques on that data, create uh, capable models, uh, do things in real time with real-time streaming, you know, have end-to-end -end governance on both, on everything, not just your data, but your, your files, your models, your dashboards, your notebooks. No one else is actually doing that, so um, it's been you know, two decades of um, you know, frankly archaic software in the database space, and I feel like in the last, just the last five years, we've really turned a corner to actually uh, making, making data fun again. So. Well, it was super awesome having you here, Richard. I enjoyed chatting with you. I know Ari did too. For sure. <laughs> and I hope you all did as well at home. So we do have our next awesome guest. Uh, we're going to have Robin yeah. come on over. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Hey, Robin. Hi, how are you amazing. both? Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you for joining it. us. Absolutely. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, uh, Robin, our one of our only a handful uh, of field CTOs, absolutely. which is a super important position. I love, not everyone knows what a field CTO does, so why don't you uh, introduce yourself, where you, you're from, and... What, what you do. Absolutely, so Robin Sutara, I am one of four global field CTOs uh, here at Databricks. Uh, despite the accent, I am based out of London, so uh, <laughs> help, uh, help the team there uh, cover Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, field CTO is a super interesting role, especially right now here at Databricks. Uh, so big shout out to Chris, John, and Dale, the other three uh, <laughs> that help, help me cover the world here. Uh, what we do is really sit with all of the uh, 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 C-suite, uh, executive level customer contacts that we have and really help them think about Databricks is an amazing technology. I think anybody who comes out of this week and doesn't think about uh, what an amazing platform that we have uh, just hasn't been listening to all the announcements. But uh, once you have that lake house technology and you're really thinking about that implementation, how do you actually think about now making that a reality? Uh, how do you get the buy-in from the people across the organization? How do you think about the processes, uh, the organizational structure, the design, uh, change management, all of those things that go into it to make sure that you have governance and controls, uh, policies that help you drive success with the Lakehouse technology. So uh, that's what we get to work on every day and it's a super exciting time to be in that space. That's awesome. I know you spoke a little bit about you know, the different announcements in, in the keynote today, and I know you also said you speak with a lot of C-suite executives. Are, were the, was there anything in the keynote where you were like, yes, this is something that these organizations need and that should pay attention to? Uh, uh, Lakehouse IQ is, think, I think, the <laughs> <Yeah>. biggest <laughs> announcement. The, yeah. the thing people struggle with is they build great technology and data products within their organization, but then nobody can use them, right? Mm -hmm. They haven't thought about how do you actually think about democratization and access yeah. to people across the business groups, not just your data teams. Uh, and so uh, technologists tend to love our product and then they really sort of use it and they build it up. But how do you now get people in finance and HR and all of the yeah. pieces across your business to use the data and the data products that you're building in your organization. And so for me, Lakehouse IQ is like, finally, we can get it. Democratization yeah. becomes reality yeah. when you get it into the hands of the people across the organization. That's awesome. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And is it tomorrow or later today you're giving a talk on uh, uh, data strategy? Love to hear your, you know, what are your thoughts? We haven't covered that topic yet today. Yeah, so, so super fortunate, brand new track here at, uh, at Data and AI Summit around data strategy. Uh, lots of great examples from customers who have figured out how to break through on the people and the process. Uh, and once they've built their lake house, how do they actually land that? Uh, but I'll be joined with Dale uh, Williamson, who's the other field CTO based out of EMEA. 
and we are covering sort of uh, how do you navigate the Game of Thrones of your data strategy, <laughs> uh, leveraging Gen AI. And so uh, I'm really thinking about the impact that generative AI is going to have on people and process your governance, your, your data strategy. And so super excited to do that session tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, so hope to see you there. And speaking of session, right before then, you will be at the Woman in Data and AI panel. I will. I am excited. What can we look forward to you sharing there? I am so honored to be part of that panel, to be <laughs> honest. There's some amazing powerhouse female talent from uh, across the ecosystem, every level, every role, uh, every sort of capability. And so really looking forward to listening and sharing my story, uh, but listening and learning from them as well. There's just such an opportunity uh, for us to build up uh, diverse talent across the ecosystem. And I'm a firm believer that data is the best place yeah. to build out diverse teams yeah. from different backgrounds and experiences and culture. Uh, we were just talking before this session, uh, I actually started not in technology, I repaired Apache helicopters oh, wow. on the Korean DMZ. Wow. And so that's how I got into tech. And so. <laughs> yeah, and, and the joke is, uh, you know, the application for Databricks said Apache Experience, mm -hmm. Apache Spark, Spark for those yeah. listening in. <laughs> yeah, uh, not Apache, Apache helicopter. Uh, warrior helicopter was not exactly <laughs> I think so what cool. they were expecting. So, but I think data is a great space mm -hmm. for how do you bring that real world experience into technology mm -hmm. and unlock the power of data across the ecosystem. And so this panel is going to be a great chance for us to see all those different sort of experiences and capabilities and that people bring and can bring into data organizations. Yeah, yes. that, that's great. And um, you know, you uh, like when I was with Dale, we uh, did tons of EBCs, executive briefings, and that's one of the roles you were talking about. Um, you know, we only have a few minutes left, but like, what are some like high-level thoughts on uh, like data strategy that you're hearing these days? Is it been changing? You know, LLMs, what what have you? What are you hearing from the executives? Yeah, I think any organization that isn't thinking about generative <laughs> AI has just been sleeping yeah. for yeah. the last few weeks. Uh, so lots of organizations are really starting to think about what impact is this going to have on our strategy? How do we think about uh, the impact it's going to have on the people in the organization? Uh, so we're really trying to, and we'll give you some real world examples and tips on how you integrate that into your strategy. How do you prepare your organization? How do you not just build talent and pipeline of talent, but how do you up-level existing people in the organization? What are the things that you can automate versus where do you really unlock the power of your, the, the people within your organization that have the business knowledge and understanding? And so there's such a great balance, I think, that's uh, changing as generative AI is coming into the picture. Uh, and I have a background in intellectual property, so lots of wow. organizations are asking about how do we protect our IP? And that's the great thing about Lakehouse and open ecosystems is it's your data, your models, your property. And right. so how do we make sure that we're building a technology that empowers you yeah. to protect the amazing IP that you're building uh, to create for your customers? So. That is amazing. I learned a lot about you in what? What was that? A few minutes, seven, seven minutes? minutes? You are amazing. Oh, no, thank you so much. You're both. Thank you for the opportunity. You're doing phenomenal things, especially at the Women in Data and AI panel. Yes. Y'all, check that out on Thursday. Robin will be a star <laughs> of the show. Ari? Yeah, and th thank you for being a guest. Safe travels uh, crossing uh, the globe. Only four of you to represent the whole world. Absolutely. So thank amazing. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.